Hey guys, Dortmund Regionals just finished. We actually shoutcasted the finals. Absolutely an amazing game. It was actually Goldengo versus Chiampao. Two amazing decks. We don't really usually see Goldengo and Chiampao actually in the finals. So it was really nice to see both decks there. So make sure you guys go check out our finals reaction. It was ab absolutely amazing. We loved that final game. And the genius uh, strategy of the Chiampao player to keep one prizers on the board so the Ch golden go could not get ahead and uh, end game absolutely genius uh, but yeah here we're gonna go ahead and talk about the top 16 decks in dortmund uh in germany we want to talk about the european meta so let's jump right in uh, i do want to explain a little bit about the european meta in my opinion i think they love roaring moon uh so we saw a lot of roaring moon in that tournament uh, but also they love Gardevoir, and, uh, but they're not as heavy in Tina, in my opinion. They don't play as much Tina as the North Americans do. So that's, that's why we see a big difference, I think, in what's topping. So let's go ahead and jump right in, guys. We got top 16 here, a number 16 Gardevoir. Um, uh, this was uh, Nico Alabas, and he just ran a Gardevoir deck. Uh, nothing sp extremely special. You see the Screamtail Cresselias, of course the Greninja and uh, the m protection here from any attacks. Uh, and nothing special really, just uh, a number two on the counter catcher. And uh, only three Ultra Balls. That is a small count, but uh, I guess uh, we don't really need to look for a lot. It's just a Gardevoir EX really you can look for. And... Uh, there's Zacian V. I mean, he doesn't really have any other searchers. You usually see Gardevoir running a bunch of level balls. Well, there they are. There's the level balls. Uh, so he could find Gardevoir's uh, Zacian V. So uh, interesting. Uh, yeah, just two of the reversal and 10. Nothing really special about this Gardevoir. Just a regular Gardevoir. Just really well played. And it can get you to really high places. I mean, we see Gardevoir everywhere, guys. Play this before it gets rotated. Of course, we know a lot of things rotate in this deck. Uh, these Shining Arcanas go... Uh, the station fees done for but of course if you keep a lot of the rest of the deck and of course your level balls are gone but yeah guys um let's move on uh, we got number 15 here charizard i'm really excited to see this let's see anything special about this charizard nothing special he is running the iridian charizard i'm actually seeing a lot more value of this card now i didn't believe in it now i do because what happens is uh, you could force a game state where the opponent can only take one prize where you could still do insane amounts of damage with this Charizard. Uh, of course, you have to either have lost the Pidgeot or somehow collapsed it, which is almost impossible. Uh, you can never collapse Stadium, the, uh, the, the Pidgeot. What happens usually gets attacked and killed and you can collapse one of your Rotoms or the Luminium, whichever was on board. And now if you have both on board, it's going to be a little bit tough. You just got to be a little bit aggressive and take out his attackers. But I think, guys, Charizard can actually be really good in a lot of matchups. Uh, so you need to be smart in the way you set up your board. But you can get uh, some really strong endgame uh, boards where the opponent can really not get as much value from him from you as much as you can like 250 on one fire uh, almost nothing else in the game can do that and right in charizard uh, just say, staying there i think there's value in it now of course you're going to be risking putting in in there so that's why we're seeing there's one switch here let's look at this uh he's running exactly the azul gg lineup here uh no actually we don't see tm devo there is no tm devo so instead of vitality man we uh, TM Devo, we just went for TM Devo, uh, sorry, Choice Belt instead, sorry, yeah, Azul actually runs for Force, Choice, and TM Devo, but we don't see TM Devo here at all, this is actually really interesting, I really wanted to see a deck that's Charizard that made it to top 8 or top 16 that did not run uh, TM Devo, and this is it, this is the one that did not run TM Devo, he's running one Artizone and one Lost City, um, I think this is a little bit risky, but a lot of people like the Artisan. In my opinion, it's a little bit risky. So many decks can gain so much value from your Artisan. Of course, Charizard gains the most amount of value from uh, setting up his board, typically. Uh, but you, you just don't want the opponent to get ahead in any way. And you helping him, I, in my opinion, I, don't, I just don't think Artisan is worth it. But a lot of people disagree with me. How many... 
Uh, Iona's at three? Wow. Three Arvin? Only three Arvin. This is actually really interesting. I would love to test three Arvin. I would love to test three Arvin. <laughs> it's a little bit scary. But I would love to test three Arvin because, of course, you're looking for room for stuff. You could always add uh, more tools. You could always add more removal. I think Counter Catcher at two is your max. You don't really need any more. You could always add more level balls. You're always, there's always one more card you always might need in the meta. So being able to be uh, really flexible with your Arvins, I think that has a lot of value. So really interesting Charizard deck. Really liking it. Let's move on here. Oh, my God. The Snorlax Pidgeot. Has done it. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I don't like these stall decks, guys. Ugh. So if anybody wants to learn about this bird control, um, go watch All Out Blitzel. He's literally playing this deck right now in a tournament. Basically, what you do is Luxray really limits your op options by removing some of your trainers. And then uh, he just forces you to get into a state where you retreat a lot. Use up all your energies and then you just uh, uh, actually there's uh, <laughs> the one uh, Ola Blitzel is running has that Xian Yu that removes your the top two cards from your deck. But yeah, guys, basically you're literally just running a stall deck. Very annoying. I can't believe a stall deck is winning. This is really bad news for us Charizard players and any actually any real deck players because. Once these uh, stall decks become really, really famous, the game is not, not going to be playable. Moving on, guys. We got Genesect Mew here. The Fusion... Uh, the DTE Mew. Really nice. Anything special? Only three on the crams. We are running the path here. Oh, yeah. This is pretty much the same list that actually took the whole... Uh, what was it? Peoria? Regionals? But uh, absolutely nice to see here. Alyssa only at one. No, no, no. This is much less. One only this. Uh, very hard to find this Alyssa. Interesting deck, guys. Yeah, DT is still alive. Play this uh, deck before it rotates. Only a couple of more. Uh, one more month left before this deck is gone. Another Charizard. Let's look at this, guys. Uh, nothing switched. You're earning the Radiant Charizard here. Seven energy, choosing to run one super rod. We are running justified gloves here. I wonder if we played the mirror match and he won. <laughs> I think justified gloves is a really good option here. Really good against the roaring moon matchup. You don't have to use a counter catcher anymore. Turn one, you can still get a KO once he gets a KO on you. Uh, of course, in the roaring moon matchup, you never ever put a two prizer on board because he can get a KO. And boss your two prizer turn one. You never ever want him to get a uh, two prizer turn one. If he does, uh, basically you can never go to Pidgeot, and you want to go a turn where you get a KO with a charm in there. That's basically what you're gonna have to do. Uh, but uh, yeah, you want to slow down the game. You want to not have any two prizers on board. Uh, just fight gloves really helps you with that matchup. Arvin, uh, sacrifice that for Sealstone. It's fine. Maybe we don't go to Pidgeot. But we get the Ultra Ball, we have Rare Candy in hand, we get Charizard, we get that KO on the Roaring Moon, we're already ahead. Next uh, turn, we really just want to do Charmander 30 damage, we get that KO. If we're looking for anything, it's a lost vacuum, secure that KO, and we can play from that position, you know what I mean? Put a Charmander behind us, have a Charmeleon in our hand, it's very easy um, to play in that position. So I really love the Justify Gloves, the Justify Gloves, <laughs> I love it so much, I lost the, I got DQ'd from a whole... League uh, Cup after I won it because they realized I was running a proxy justified gloves. That's uh, so much I love the card. I <laughs> didn't remove it, but of course you have to sacrifice. So you, there's no vitality uh, belt. Uh, now there is a choice belt, so we can still KO Tina's. But vitality belt just just gives you really amazing numbers against uh, RKS. Gives you amazing numbers against uh, Miradon. Gives you really amazing numbers. Like right now, basically, we do not beat Mirai down any special way. But sometimes you really don't care about that. You can get that KO on the right show with the choice belt. Uh, honestly, yeah, that makes sense. You can get the KO on the right show. And then from there, you can just KO the Iron Hand and then the Mirai down. So, yeah, I think choice belt is more value than uh, 
anything else. And we also see no TM Devo again. This whole meta, we did not see a single TM Devo. I guess TM Devo is dead. We don't have to worry about it anymore. It's just such a slow attack. It's a nice attack to have. It just doesn't give you enough, guys. The opponent gets all those cards back into his hand. He can just play them back. You basically lose a turn of attacking. Uh, unless, uh, and it's really not bad. The opponent can just sacrifice one of his ro uh, rare candies. Maybe he doesn't play both rare candies. Uh, but uh, it's very hard for the opponent to not have any more rare candies. You know, it's, uh, it's, maybe it's good against Baxcalibers, TM Devos, but that's pretty much it. I mean, Charizard is guaranteed to go into Charizard ne next turn. And then if he has Charmeleon as well, just securing that, it just, it's going to hurt you, slows you down. Puts you one turn behind. So it makes sense why no one's running TM Devo. Really liking this. I'm going to learn this and use this in my deck. So no TM Devo. A lot of people are running three Ionas. I think that's a little bit too much. I get the value of Iono late game. I really understand it. Especially with your Pidgeot on board. But uh, in my opinion, I don't like running Iono. Every time I play Iono, she just doesn't give me what I want. I would rather play Research over the Ionas usually. And so... Yeah, that's my uh, explanation why I don't run three Ionas. But yeah, guys, I really like this. I can have one more room. Oh, we do see one Nest Ball here, too. Really interesting. Nest Ball helps with the Radiant Charizard, guys. Uh, but yeah, we have room here. If we remove the TMD, we can add room for stuff. This is going to be really good. As you can see, he only runs two cities as well. Two stadiums. Two lots vacuum. So he did sacrifice one stadium there. Really interesting. Maybe in the European meta, there's just not a lot of Lost Tina. Like I explained to you guys, not a lot of Path to the Peaks to go against. Maybe only in the Fusion Mew matchup. But yeah, let's move on, guys. Radon actually made it in this um, uh, match <laughs> to the top 16. Really nice to see this uh, deck. It's very consistent deck, of course. If you hit those generators turn after turn, uh, you can really do a lot of work. And running of 14 energies pretty much guarantees you hitting those generators. We also see a TM Devo here, one of the only decks running it. And this is the only deck that cannot be used against it as well. Like, uh, TM Devo does not work against Mer uh, like against the Meridon. It really doesn't do anything. So it cannot be affected by it. Really nice here to see this uh, amazing deck. Two Raikou Vs. We can see he really wanted to attack with this turn one. A Raichu here to get big KOs. Uh, Iron Hands to ke keep him ahead. Uh, really, really nice deck to see. Uh, moving on, guys, we got Roaring Moon. I said, guys, Roaring Moon was very, very <laughs> big in this tournament. I expected it to be very big. The Europeans love their Roaring Moon. I don't know why. They love Roaring Moon so much. I think it's the Dark uh, Galarian Moltres. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe they love the Frenzy Gouging ability. They just see the potential. But the European players love Roaring Moon. I'm very happy to see this. Four trekking shoes in this deck. Wow. Uh, four Pokemon catchers. This is insane. But makes sense. Roaring Moon is such a consistent deck. All it needs is to be able to use a counter character. But Roaring Moon is, goes f f ahead so quickly. Gets ahead so quickly. Like by turn one, it's already ahead if it's going second. So you'd almost never be able to use a counter catcher. So instead of using two counter catcher, we went for four Pokemon catchers actually could even out if it's a 50 50 shot then we basically just uh, have two counter catcher i mean it is more expensive we have to put four cards instead of two but uh pretty much he's gonna get one counter catcher out of all four guaranteeing that it works uh, very interesting to see <laughs> this uh, of course for energy switch one pal pad to return probably the boss or saw does and then uh, escape rope and four poke stop guys learn this deck that if you want to play roaring moon high level look how how big this deck is uh, moving on there's an ente iron <laughs> valley and this is amazing uh, this deck's pretty uh, you know tough to go against thinks they got a really good matchup against charizard four magma basins in this deck one team devo here two four seal stone two future capsules one Lost Vacuum, one Super Rod, an Earthen Vessel, a Heavy Ball, some Ultra Balls, four of the Switch, four of the Switch, and four of the Escape Ropes. Uh, I mean, believe it or not, that's pretty much uh, a staple in this deck. Four Battle VIP, one Serena, one Boss, and two Iona, and a Research. Let's look at this. Anything special? We do see the Midi Champ. 
There's a barrel in here for a little bit more consistency, but only one. So not really reliant on it, but still there. Interesting. Moving on, guys. Gardevoir again. Gardevoir, very strong deck here. A Screamtail Gardevoir. Um, no, actually, no Screamtail here. We just went for the Cresselization V. And yeah, look how much of a small number of rare candies Gardevoir uses. But to be honest, they're able to use it because uh, they just always have a Kirla on board. So if they don't have a rare candy, they just go into the Kirla. Two Contra Catcher here and one Turo to pick up that Kirla. Moving on, this is another Gardevoir. It's probably going to be looking exactly the same. This one actually runs the Scream Tail. Does have the Chrysilla as well. Two row right there, one boss, no pal pads, one lost vacuum, an artisan and collapse stadium. So he has two ways to get rid of his guard for EX. And uh, yeah, consistent deck here with two super rods, two counter catcher. Yeah. Uh, another guard for Scream Tail and Zation V in this one. This is the highest guard for from all of them. Does run the Mullet Hill, wow. Gabriel Smart did it. Sixth place with Mullet Hill, wow. Wow, this is big actually being able to heal. Because if you keep this for a couple of turns, you're healing a lot. Wow, he is running Mullet Hill. This is really nice to see. Him switching out, uh, oh no, he doesn't switch out the Artisan, what does he switch out? The Lost Vacuum? Yeah, he basically gets rid of the Lost Vacuum, so no way for him to pick up the Lost Vacuum. He really he didn't have any other way to pick up the Lost Vacuum. He doesn't have a way to pick up items, he doesn't have an Irida or an Arvin, obviously. But yeah, really nice to see this. Another DTE Fusion, guys. Oh my god, 5th place DTE Fusion Mew. Uh... This one is running a couple more Alyssa Sparkles. There's a Palpa and there are only one Trekking Shoes, four of the Crams, and three of the Lost Vacuums to kind of discard, probably just to discard, yep. Uh, and only one path, wow, only one path. Of course, this is a pretty popular deck, as you can see, it's doing really well. Really nice, guys. If you want to play <laughs> Mew, you got one more chance. I think one more Regionals before the rotation. Lost Box, Charizard, wow, it's doing so well here at 4th place, only 1 Jet Energy, insane, but the idea behind this deck is you turbo go into 7, and then you can activate so much stuff, you could activate the Roaring Moons, you can activate uh, Pidgeot V and get a free KO, you got the Radiant Charizard that can keep picking up with the Claras, absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing deck, guys. And then uh, some some matchups, the Mawa is really strong. Some matchup is not. So it depends. Like against Charizard, this is really strong. But what Charizard does is usually he just lost cities this Mawa. So you figure out a switch. So you're going to have to use the switch for the Mawa. But once you do that, you lost city yet. Make sure it's done. So it's gone to the lost city. Because this deck doesn't run any paths. And uh, basically, from there, you can actually play the game. Hope to God you're, you're not already so far behind. But usually, you're not that far behind. What happens usually, you just can KO your Charizard. So you want to do something special to come back. But yeah, guys, really interesting deck here. Guys, I can't wait for the new rotation. When that maximum belt shows up, woof, all these decks are going to do a lot of big changes. Gonna have one maximum belt in every single deck or prime catcher. All right, guys, this is a Giratina lost box. Oh, Giratina actually did it. I, I actually didn't believe in Giratina. I didn't think, think the Europeans run the Giratina, but Giratina did make it to lost uh, to the top uh, three. A really strong deck. Obviously, what happens is you just get consistent, get to seven, get to ten, and then you want a path uh, your opponent at a really smart time where he usually has used up all his resources or you feel like he just cannot uh, get rid of this card 
that's when you usually play it and then you can really get ahead very quickly especially if you rock sand while this is on board that's pretty much game over for the opponent you can come back from that uh, so <laughs> really consistent deck we're gonna lose this but it's really nice to see it you're gonna lose a lot of its power i mean what happens is you lose the path uh, you lose the that's pretty much it you lose the path that's it but the path is a lot of its power I'm not gonna lie. If I can just fight a Garrettian and Vista, all I'll do is just play two choice belts. <laughs> but if I cannot fight it with paths, that's really what creates a big issue. Also, the Sableye, only a one is really risky. Being able to lost city, this is really big deal. But yeah, Garrettian and Lost Box number three. Gold Dango is number two. We watched the finals. Absolutely amazing game. One Palkia. Uh, he actually utilized Raiding Range anytime he wanted with that Palkia. Really nice to see. Uh, he is running one canceling cologne. We saw that. Of course, four energy retrievals. Also, four cross switcher. I think we're going to see that in the same Chien Pao deck. Very similar set of trainers, guys, because what happens is both decks are actually very similar to each other. They're looking for the superior energy, for, uh, the energy from the trash, picking up in, it, in their hand. And then they can do a lot of damage with it. This one is only running three rare candies. So you cannot TM Devo the Backscalibers, but what you do is there's only two Backscalibers. So if you can Lost City one or two, one and then he prizes the other, that's pretty much game. Or if you can get rid of both, Lost City both, that's game. So that's really what you try to do. You really need to use a Country Catcher as a Charizard to Lost City. You really don't want to fight the Chien Pao in any way. You just want to be battle this Backscalibur to win game. Once this Backscalibur is out of the game, uh, that's game over. Not nobody's running three bucks calibers anymore. That's what I understood. So Chiampa is actually a really sh uh, easy matchup for the Charizard because we can lost city it, uh, and anybody that really utilizes Arvin can lost city this uh, back caliber in my opinion. But uh, still performing really high. I saw the match absolutely amazing, uh, but I figured out the how how to really counter the deck guys. Uh, if you can deal with these back calibers, because what happens is usually. They're running a very small number of Backscalibers. It's a tiny number. You can find the Chien Pao's, but as we saw in the finals, a smart uh, Chien Pao player, what he's going to do, he's going to force you to just get a KO on a one prizer while he gets a KO on your two prizer. So it's going to be smart for you to be able to Radiant Greninja if you're Charizard, or sorry, Radiant Charizard if you're uh, Charizard DX at that turn but usually you have a pgl ex on board and champon can kill that still to get that final two prize so not gonna lie guys this is the only way you can battle the champau is you go for his back scalibur the back jugular is what we're gonna call it uh but yeah guys that's it for top 16 in my uh, opinion that was an amazing uh tournament uh, zapdos actually made it top 32 in the tournament regionals uh, another Pokemon creator and a lot of people really showcased a lot of strong decks really interesting in your opinions What's your favorite? There's the Goldengo there the Charizards and all the Chimpao is interested in your opinions guys leave them down below and I'll see you next time